and trust as you worship with us. You'll be drawn closer to the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, closer to us as a community of faith, a church family. It is the second Sunday, so there's a second Sunday offering. Not sure what the offering is this week, uh, this second Sunday. And there's a root beer float um, uh, in the fellowship hall. Though there's root beer floats after the service in the fellowship hall. It is good to have Larry back from South Africa. We are so glad he's back. And Sandy, we're sorry for the loss of your dear uh, beloved pet. I'm sorry for that. But, and we are very. Oh, cool. How many years? Really? Wow. High school sweethearts, that kind of thing? Really? I didn't see this story. We're getting more here. <laughs> High school sweethearts, known each other 55 years, married 19. That is wonderful. The flowers on the altar are from the Isaacsons. Thanks so much. And here's some, uh, some more good news. Uh, Steve Moreland, they cannot detect any cancer at all in Steve. So we are glad for that. We'll keep praying because you've got to go five years clean, right, Steve? Is that what we're looking at? Okay. Yes, Sheila. I want to let you know about Yeah. Mm. Oh my goodness. Wow. Praise God. Well, wow. Right, right. Sure. But keep lifting her up in prayer. This just now became a prayer and praise service. Terry. Uh, Stacy Ace is now a grandma. Yes. And Mama and Baby are doing great. And it was a, a pretty much a hard labor, right? We were getting word on that. Baby is, is out. Calling her maybe Lady May. Is that, is that the, the nickname they've given her? And I am privileged to do Carson and Aspen Ames' wedding next Saturday at 4 o'clock at Oak Hills in uh, Layton. So we have a rehearsal Thursday night at, at 4 over there as well. So good things are happening. We're, what's that? About the wedding? No, I did not. Well, it's not, it doesn't mean I saw it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Children. Yeah, go ahead. Stacy's or Aspen? Oh, Aspen. Carson's new wife. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, yep, they told me Grandmom was helping out with all that, yeah. Well, there's something else to lift up in prayer. Aspen, Carson Ames, new wife-to-be. Um, her grandmom has stage four bone cancer? Okay, lung cancer. All righty, well, lift all those things up in prayer. Join us Wednesday night online, Facebook online, for Prayers of the People Live. Always have... Uh, a great time doing that. I thank you all for uh, bringing your prayer request to that and uh, the opportunity and privilege for me to pray for us all. Well, let's stand for our call to worship. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins 
and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us take a brief moment and ask the Holy Spirit to show us where we fall short of God's standard of holiness, confess those sins, and receive the forgiveness that we have in the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the church of Christ and by his authority I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves." In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reached their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen... 
plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Here ends the first reading. And now the gospel, Mark chapter 6, 14 through 29. It's about John the Baptist being beheaded. <clears throat> King Herod heard about this, for Jesus' name had become well known. Some were saying John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others said he is Elijah, and still others claimed he is a prophet like one of the prophets of long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. For Herod himself, and he had him bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not long. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she was not able to, because Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. When Herod heard about John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. Finally, the, opportunity, uh, the opportune time came. On his birthday, Herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guest. The king said to the girl, Ask me for any, anything you want, and I'll give it to you. And he promised her with an oath, whatever you ask, I will give you up to half my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what shall I ask for? The head of John the Baptist, uh, she answered. At once the girl hurried into the king with the request, I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was greatly distressed. But because of his oaths and his dinner guest, he did not want to refuse her. So he immediately sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. The man went, beheaded John in the prison, and brought back his head on a platter. He presented it to the girl, and she gave it to her mother. On hearing of this, John's disciples came and took his body. have got so weak I can hardly lift this cup of coffee, said one. Yes, I know, said another. My cataracts are so bad, I can't even see my coffee. I couldn't even mark an X at election time because my hands are so crippled, volunteered a third. What? Speak up. What? I can't hear you, said one elderly lady. I can't turn my head because of the arthritis in my neck, said one, to which several nodded weakly in agreement. My blood pressure pills are making me so dizzy, exclaimed another. I forget where I am and where I'm going, said another. I guess that's the price we pay for getting old, winced an old man as he slowly shook his head. The others nodded in agreement. Well, count your blessings, said a woman cheerfully. Thank God we can all still drive. <laughs> now that lady... I'd want to be on the road if they were on the road at that point in time. Seriously, if you felt blessed in this last year and a half, with social distancing, masks, hand sanitizer everywhere it was and remains, hard to feel blessed. In fact, in the last two weeks, 19 states and territories have seen a 25% increase in coronavirus cases. Now they're taking talking booster shots, and the Delta variant has spiked cases in Los Angeles 
165%. Hard to feel blessed in the middle of it all. Reading about the uptick in COVID cases, new variants, booster shots, and masks made me ask, is Corona on a reunion tour? And there's always politics and what's happening with crime in our country to bring us down. If we dwell on all this in the general state of the world, it's easy to become depressed about it all. But God doesn't want us depressed. Now, I counseled many people with major depression that was recurrent and severe. And if you're one of those people who suffer from major depression, there's no shame in getting medication to help with it. In fact, medications are God's gift to us to help us live productive and fulfilled lives. Some folks simply are given to depression as a diabetic is given to blood sugar issues. Someone who should have been thoroughly depressed was the Apostle Paul. While he was under house arrest in Rome, he wrote his epistle to the Ephesians. In Remember, he was chained to a Roman soldier for two years while he wrote this. While changed and, uh, chained and under house arrest, he managed to praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, was, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Paul was not bemoaning his situation. He is thanking God for all the spiritual blessings he and all believers have in Christ. Verses 3 to 14 are one sentence in Greek. If you're a grammar geek, it would be a run-on sentence for sure. But there's no punctuation in, in the Koine Greek at that time. So, But it's Trinitarian in nature with God, the Father's work in electing us to salvation, mentioned in verses 3 through 6. Jesus' redeeming work discussed in verses 7 through 12. And the Holy Spirit's work in sealing us in verses 13 and 14. In his commentary on Ephesians, John Stott tells us God the Father is the source of or origin of every blessing which we enjoy. God the Father is the subject of every main verb in this subject. He has blessed us. He has chosen in verse 3. He's chosen us in verse 4. He's destined us in verse 5. He's freely bestowed on us in verse 6. He's lavished his grace on us in verse 8. He's made known his will and purpose in verses 9 and 10. And he accomplishes all things according to the All of these blessings come because we are in Christ. We are placed into Christ and adopted into his family in the waters of our baptisms when we were raised to new life. In the first 14 verses of Ephesians, Jesus Christ is mentioned by name or title or pronoun or possessive no less than 15 times. The phrase in Christ or in him occurs 11 times as well. The Holy Spirit is mentioned in verses 13 and 14, but is soon to be working through the entire passage. He is a seal, a guarantee of all that we're going to inherit for eternity. And remember, we were given the Holy Spirit in the waters of our baptisms or when we heard the gospel and believed. And if you can understand the scriptures at all, remember, it's only because you have the Holy Spirit because the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. And you can only say Jesus Christ is Lord and mean it by the power of the Holy Spirit. So if you can do those two things, you can be assured that the Spirit of God is in you, given to you in the water of your baptisms. Paul's emphasis in this passage is that the blessings we have in Christ are spiritual ones. This is different than the Old Testament where God's blessings mentioned in Deuteronomy 28 were material. If you were blessed, you would have many children, good harvest, an abundance of cattle and sheep, and leadership among the nations. But the distinctive blessings of the new covenant, which we are under, are spiritual in nature. These blessings are the law written on our hearts by the Holy Spirit, a personal knowledge of God through Christ, and the forgiveness of our sins. Paul has told us that we have every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies. We've been chosen before the foundation of the world to be in Christ. We have been adopted into God's family in the waters of our baptisms. We have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Our sins have been forgiven because of his grace, which he has lavished on us. And we are sealed with the Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance 
in heaven. Down, depressed, fearful, uncertain this morning? Do what Paul reminds us that's summarized in an old hymn called Count Your Blessings. The lyrics go like this. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Are you ever burdened with a load of You are called to bear. Count your many blessings. Every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven, not your home on high. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged. God is over all. Count your many blessings. Angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God hath done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. See what God hath done. But don't simply count them about how you were blessed. Be a blessing as well. Why did God choose you to adopt you into his family before the foundations of the world were even set? Did he look down the corridors of time and see what a great person you would be and decide to choose you or know that you would decide to believe in Jesus so he predestined you to be in Christ? Absolutely not. Your salvation has nothing to do with you. The Holy Spirit created faith in you and I who were dead in our trespasses and sins for by his grace are you saved through faith. It is the gift of God not of works, lest anyone should boast. It there refers to both the faith and the grace. Both the faith and the grace are gifts. And God simply out of his love chose you and me to believe in Christ for our salvation. It had nothing to do with what great people we are, what we do for him, uh, what family we'd have, what our careers would be. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with his grace, his mercy, and his love. What a blessing. What a blessing. But God did chose us so we would be holy and blameless before him. Because he's chosen us, it doesn't mean we can live any way we want. His purpose and blameless before him. How do we do that? We live as blessed people who bless others. As Pastor Timothy Merrill says, followers of Jesus try to live in a way that blesses others. Our in action. Scripture talks about how blessed people live. And in James chapter 3, God bless others with their words. In Psalm 1, God says, people who are blessed don't listen to complainers naysayers, and negative people. In James chapter 1, God says, people who are blessed feel grateful, not entitled, for every good and perfect gift comes from above. In 2 Corinthians 8, God's word says that people who are blessed are generous. The Corinthian church put together an offering to send to the church in Jerusalem that was experiencing a drought and had nothing. And in Job chapter 1, Job evidences being a blessed person because he's humbled by God's goodness. He said in Job 1, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Merle goes on to say that people who are blessed see the sacred and holy in everything. They perceive blessings when others are oblivious. In turn, a blessed person blesses everything and everyone. In the Talmud, Rabbi Meyer suggests reading, reciting 100 blessings each day, one every 10 minutes of our waking lives. 
which is to say that we should be constantly aware of the world around us and re should respond through gratitude and prayer. In the 1800s, there was a woman named Hetty Green, and she was famous for being the richest woman of that period. She was worth $4.5 billion. She was a great investor, always wore a black dress that she would change when it would wear out. This earned her the nickname, the Witch of Wall Street. But Hetty Green isn't just famous for being rich. She's famous for being incredibly cheap and stingy. Although she was rich, she never washed her hands because that would use soap and water, which cost money. She ate cold oatmeal and drank cold coffee because it cost money to heat them. She kept her work in briefcases and suitcases so she wouldn't have to rent an office that was even in a building that she owned. She once spent all night looking for a lost stamp. And sadly, when her son broke his leg, she didn't take him to the doctor. And when she did, she took him to the free clinic. And she wasn't served because she was so rich. And her son eventually lost his leg due to a lack of treatment. Point being, she had it all. She had more than enough, but literally was not willing to spend even a penny. Thankfully, God is not like Hetty Green. He has given us every spiritual blessing we can have in Christ. May we not hoard those blessings as Hetty Green did, but share them, particularly the blessing of forgiveness of sins and eternal life that comes by believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. And all God's people said, Bye. 
You give the healing and grace. 
body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for the remission of your sins. Now may the body of the Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Lord keep you, the Lord his face shine upon you, gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> God. You're the Lord of all creation, God, you made me in your image, and I'm just a reflection of the love that I've been given. Everybody wants to be somebody, want to be somebody too. I'm known, known for something, I want to be known for you. I want to be the moon up among the stars, fly around the world, lighting up the dark of night. Nothing without the sun's amazing grace in everything I do. If you're shining on me, I'm shining right back for you. want to be the moon. Lord, I want to be the moon for you. Yeah, there's going to be some cloudy days. Time is going to cover up the work you're doing to me. Still with every breath I breathe, I want to be the moon. Up among the sun, fly around the world. Lighting up the dark of night. 
breaks out do a solo <laughs> thank you Lindy thank you <laughs> thank you Mark yes, honey.